During okay. COVID and, and 2021, we were able to finish renovations on our hospice facility here in Centerville. Um, and it went from a six bed facility to a 10 bed facility with a commercial kitchen, some more spaces for families to get away and have some more peaceful, quiet time together. Um, instead of it being in this one area where all the families were, we, the outside areas are much nicer um, for families and patients as well. So that's been a real positive. Now, again, it was a challenge. It was a challenge for our contractors. It was a challenge because we never closed our beds. So we, we kept seeing patients in the, the beds that we had, and then we kept shifting them as we added on beds and opened up wings. Um, so that was a challenge, but it was also a very exciting time. Um, also, I have to say that one of the highlights for me as a CEO, um, and Kenda might speak a little bit more to this, is the support that we continued to see through the community, through our donors, through, through our steadfast donors that have been with us for years, and new donors that saw that, you know what, Compass is here for this community. They have been providing grief support, they've been providing palliative care or supportive care and hospice care all through this, and they never wavered. Insurance mm -hmm. company is only paying for a portion of the hospice care, so we rely on the additional money for um, from fundraising. Also our grief support for hospice patients, families, or the community. That is all fundraising dollars that we count on so it's, you know, we're, yes, we are looking at grants that's available. We do direct mail and again, the events and different things, but we have to fundraise to continue to provide the care and support for the patients and the families. Hospice is hard because people don't think about hospice until they need it, but just a, the awareness of that we're not just hospice, we have grief support and other, and that it's not completely paid by insurance companies. So we need to fundraise to raise that money. And again, I think when people hear of family members or friends that's been taken care of, then they really see the perspective of what we need to do. But again, uh, we decided to um, kind of pair up with the hospital, University of Maryland. I asked them years ago if they were willing or had a space in there as that hospital was decreasing the services that they were providing. I knew there was some open space. So I thought, hmm, what a perfect opportunity, right? So we approached the hospital and they graciously let us renovate an area in there, which a lot of people know. We had a four bed facility there for several years. And during COVID, what we saw and we are still seeing, and I think we'll continue to see, is that people aren't necessarily wanting to send their loved ones to a facility. They want them to stay home. There was uh, inability for them to visit like they wanted to. We really had to kind of lock down things. There was very limited visiting and very limited amount of people that could visit. Unfortunately, not only in the hospice industry, but hospitals and of the like, patients died alone. And that's not what any of us wanted or want ever, or certainly would want for a loved one. So we've seen a decrease in, in the need for beds and an increase in patients staying at home under hospice services. So with that, and with the fact that we've already talked about our renovations here in Centerville, that was already way underway. We went from six beds to 10. So it really is a facility that both counties can utilize. And certainly, and now that we've closed Chestertown um, a couple months ago, we still have a lot of bed openings here in Centerville. So my goal really is to build awareness so that people know the services that we have to offer the communities and they get them in a more timely fashion because we are still seeing patients very last days to hours of life in our hospice program. And it's a benefit of six months. I'd love for people to understand that hospice is not about giving up. It's about reframing your hope um, for the time that we have left. And none of us know really how much time we have left. And it's not giving up and it's, you're still in control, you know. Uh, of what you do, what medications you take, and how you live the rest of your days. Matter of fact, I believe under hospice, you have more control about what your final days are like um, for you and your family than you would if you did not have hospice care.